What's up, college football fans and Mean Green fans? Sonoy Valente once, a, once again here with the Mean Green Show. And I'm tonight I'm joined by J.D., North Texas Eagle, the insider on all things UNT football and UNT football recruiting. J.D., okay, so post-law tech, a day removed. What are your thoughts? Oh, I mean, I think there were some positives to take away from it. I don't think it was all doom and gloom. Um, you know, just kind of going over the stats and stuff. You know, we held them. You know, defensively, I think the defense played good. They started off, you know, slow start. But, um, yeah, I think the the main struggle right now is, is figuring out the quarterback situation. But um, I didn't think that we would stay within, you know, I thought La Tech was a two-touchdown, you know, better team than us. Um, you know, we spotted them 24 points and then ended up, you know, 17-0 run. So, I mean, we finished strong. Um, you know, I know, you know we're down on the team. The fans are down on the team. But it seems like the team is – the actual players themselves are still still playing for Seth, still playing hard. Um, you know, they definitely – and that's one thing to say, they they didn't quit. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I do think that is a positive. Um, I, North Texas is not – I don't know. I can't remember the last game we were down a semi-significant amount and came back and rallied to win – and what was what were we down? What was it twenty four nothing? Was that in the first or just the? I was um, ten minutes left in the second. There was there were up twenty four to 24 nothing. nothing. Yeah. So I mean, I was full on ready. You know, I mean, well, okay, I guess it's going to be forty eight to to ten, maybe if we're lucky. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, they definitely played their way back into that game um, and kind of kept you know Louisiana Tech's mantra going playing everybody close um unfortunately unfortunately i think we were the biggest gap when they had though so whatever but yeah i mean really quick i mean do you think we're gonna go with austin ani going forward now or i mean what are your thoughts on that uh i mean he you know he didn't like the light the world on fire but um jace has struggled you know first part of the season hasn't really i mean that was his i mean he came in won the job and I kept thinking, you know, you know, knock the rust off, you know, next game, get a little better, knock the rust off. And it just seems like it hasn't clicked yet. So, um, you know, I mean, yeah, I mean, I, I, I would like for one of them to take it. I, I don't like the whole two quarterback run with the hot hand top. I just don't think that that works um, in football. But, um, yeah, I mean, I would say that. You know, after Jay's getting yanked so so early, and then you know Ani coming in and you know playing decent, I would say that the the competition's back up in the air. Yeah, and I will say this too: unlike last year, where I feel like every single like it was just obnoxious to say the least. How I feel like Coach Luttrell kind of said it of well, he verbatim said "hot hand" or "it's open" or "I don't want to show my hand" of the poker player jargon, blah blah blah, whatever. Um, but I feel like last year it was way more back and forth, whereas opposed to this year, I feel like he truly has tried to give Jace a lot of chances to be the guy. I, I mean, I mean, he hasn't. It, they haven't been playing musical chairs per se. I know he's pulled him at least once against UAB. I don't. I think that's the only time he's been pulled. I think other than La Tech, but so and then he came back in. So I mean. You know, it seems like he was trying to give Jace the opportunity to be that guy. And maybe, who knows? Who knows? I mean, it's a long season, as we know. Um, but we'll see how all the the cards fall. But, it, you know, I mean, if Austin Ani's going to be the guy <clears throat> going forward, then let's just see what he what he has, I guess. So here's, I guess, I'm not saying I think this is going to happen, but this might be the best case scenario as we sit here one and three. So our next three games, and I want to hear your thoughts on this at Marsh. Oh, I'm sorry. At Missouri, Marshall comes here. Liberty comes here. Those are the next three. If we lose all three, then we are one and six going into rice. If we can somehow win one of them, I guess the real, the most realistic one would probably be Marshall, I guess. Um, then we would go into Rice at two and five. And let's say we beat Rice, beat Southern Miss, beat UTEP, beat FIU. So two and five, three and five, four and five, 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 five and five. We would go into my 
No, no, is that right? Okay, give me one second. So right now we're one and three. So if we went one and two in our next three, um, we would be two in. Anyway, moral of the story is my math is a little off right now. Do you think there's any shot we can win one of the next three games, A, and then B, do you think we can, I mean, could that set us up to go 4-0 and against Rice, Southern Miss, UTEP, and FIU? Uh, it's kind of a double-edged sword. I mean, I think as long as the defense plays like it did in the second half against La Tech, like it played against the first half against SMU, I mean, I think technically any game's winnable, uh, but – we're, we're, they're gonna have to figure out and it's crazy sitting here saying that you know we have to figure out the offensive side of the ball because it seems like you know even in Seth's worst of times here he's been able to get the offense to click but right now it's just can't get anything going but yeah I mean like I said I think that that they've got a chance to be in every one of these ball games moving forward um I mean even Missouri they are a power five team but it's not like we're going to get to give we're going to play Alabama um they're still a very good SEC team but um yeah, I mean, I don't – but, but you know, with the offense playing like it is, you know, I don't think there's any game remaining on our schedule that's just a slam dunk, like take my mortgage and, and put it on North Texas either, especially the way the offense is playing. I mean, UTEP, you know, they, they, they're they playing good. Um, you know, Southern Miss, I think out of the remaining games, they're probably – Southern Miss, FIU, probably two of the, the, the lesser teams. But still, I mean, like I said, if, if we can't get offense rolling – I mean, it, it doesn't matter. Yep, yep. And let's let's play coaching from afar for a second, which is so easy for us to do. We have no idea what goes on in the actual coach's room. And obviously, I think we would both blatantly say it's way harder, way harder uh, than it looks and you know, easier said than done when it comes to executing. But what would you, as a fan, let's, you know, playing fan coach right now, what would you like to see the offense? I mean, okay, we're down some receivers. Who who the who really who knows who's gonna come back in Missouri? So I mean, do we take this bye week and we I mean, do we okay, let's go double tight ends, let's run some options. You, you know, I mean le, le, the legit option. Can we do can we put in like four or five plays for Jace? Jace can run. Um, I mean, what I mean, what would you like to see done? I mean, or do you think we just continue to halfback dive it up? Yeah, I mean, I would like to see some, you know creativity i mean it seems like we're super predictable right now um you know i mean but it's easy to sit here and be an armchair quarterback and or an armchair coach whatever you want to call it uh but yeah i mean i think we've got a lot of talent in the tight end room the wide receiver room is is hurt but at the same time we are also in year six i mean part of your job is to build depth i mean i understand that we're not a power five school and we're not going to be six to eight deep at wide receiver but still i mean Gonna have to be creative and get something, you know, something rolling. But I, like I said, I'd like to see um, tight ends a little more involved. I still think there is some talent in the wide receiver room that's left. I mean, Bryson Jackson was a very highly sought after recruit. Uh, Deontay Simpson has showed flashes that he is definitely the real deal. Um, it was good seeing Damon Ward, you know, the other night making his, his appearance. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I'd like to see some of these young guys step up, take the reins. Um, but yeah, like I said, you know, be a little more creative. Let's if we want to go up tempo, let's go up tempo. But you know, not just keep going, dive, dive, thirty yard pass. I mean, that's that's not. I mean, I, and I even said that from the first game with Jason. Like I said, it's easy to sit here and be a quarterback or coach, high, hindsight twenty twenty, all that stuff. But I, even from the get, Northwestern State game, I wish we'd have got some shorter passes, got Jason's confidence up. You know, it seemed like even that game, it was run, run, bomb it down the field. And I was like, let's, you know, throw, throw some, you know, high percentage passes. Let's get, you know, get his confidence up. Let's get rolling. And that seems like that's just, we're in game, going up on game five. And it seems like it hasn't happened yet. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, I mean, I know Jake Roberts is still young and I'm a big fan of Jake Roberts and Pirtle is playing you know, really good for us right now. And, but yeah, I mean, we could see some of these younger guys come in too, like Marquise, Caleb Johnson. I mean, if, if we're gonna, if the season's gonna end, which I'm not saying it is, but if that was gonna, 
be the case, we could, you you know, see some of these younger guys get meaningful reps and hopefully without burning the red shirt. Mm. But okay, so we have eight games left. Again, sitting at one and three. What do you think we finish at? Uh, it's like I said. You look at the schedule, and 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 I I said before the UAB game that I thought those two were you know the the UAB and Louisiana Tech games were must wins. Um, I still sit there and think that there was missed opportunities. I don't think UAB was as good as as we. I mean, I think we our offense killed. I mean, it was it was, but we're we're past that game. But I think there was some missed opportunities, uh, but. Yeah, I mean, I don't see. I, th- I mean, I see us being one and six after Liberty, and then we go to Rice, which it seems like even when we were, you know, at our peak, Rice is still a tough game. UTEP's always a tough game. Um, I mean, it could be another four win season. I mean, it could be another. It could be a three win season. I just don't. I don't see. Um, I, I'm just not seeing a lot of. You know, I think the four most winnables obviously are Rice, Southern Miss, UTEP, and FIU, and three of those four games are on the road. So, I mean. Hypothetically, if they could win one of the next three, again, against at Missouri, Marshall, or Liberty, if we could win one. doesn't even matter. Say it's Liberty. I mean, could that change your mind? Could you? Could you? Would that ignite some sort of fire in you potentially to, oh, my gosh, let's rally. Let's go. Let, let's. You know, we if we could beat Marshall or Liberty, who knows? Maybe we could win out and make it interesting at UTSA. Is there any? What I'm asking is though, is if if they were to win one of these next three games, could that ignite something in you? And do you think maybe the fan base as a whole? Mm-hmm. I mean, absolutely. Like I've I've said it pretty much every podcast I've been on. I mean, this I still think this is one of the most talented teams Seth has had. I think you know they're they're struggling at the the quarterback position, but I still think I still think Jace is super talented. I still think Austin Ani is a Austin Ani is still a very capable Comp USA quarterback. Um, and the way this defense is playing right now, I mean, when we give up twenty four port twenty four points in a conference game, that's a game we should win. I mean, um, so yeah, to, and that was long winded answer to say yeah. I mean, I think. We figure out the offense, you know, win a couple games. I mean, it's it's not out of the realm for us to, you know, win the last five games. I mean, you know, UTSA is on top of the world right now. SMU is on top of the world. But, you know, UTSA, we've seen those games that, you know, in our best years, you know, they come in and surprise us. Um, and, and in their best years, I mean, we've – that's one of those games that, you know, we had a 45-3 victory over a couple years ago. But other than that, you know, it seems like most of the games are pretty close. So, I mean, anything can happen and it's here. But, yeah, I mean, we could definitely um, – offense gets it figured out. I think Coach Bennett and the defense is is the best defense we've had since that's been here. So, that's why I think it's so disappointing is with him being an offensive coach, the, the offense struggling the way it is. Yes, I I agree. You know, one thing that's kind of uh, to be a Debbie Downer here or kick us while we're down, but I mean, Austin Kendall didn't even play. Now, UAB and La Tech have done quarterback rotations on us. So it's just like our, our conference team's going to like mark us like, okay, we're going to try out some new things against them. We're going to use North Texas as a, you, you know, a, a bit of an FCS game. And that might be a little extreme, but where I'm getting at is they didn't even have their starting quarterback. And yeah. they, you know, it's just like, and we never had a, like, I mean, till the end, it was just bad from the get go until we rallied. But, yeah, that is, I mean, tough. that's one of the, well, I mean, I sit here and say that, you know, the defense is playing good, blah, blah, blah. But, I mean, that, that they didn't have their start quarterback and, and we still couldn't beat them. And that's, I think, the most disappointing thing is because we sit here and hear from, our sidelines, you know, oh, we're down with wide receivers. We hit had the injury bug. Well, I mean, it was a couple of years ago. It was Baylor or A&M. They're on like their fourth quarterback, and they're still winning. I mean, it's like 
next man up. And like I said, I still, the wide receiver room still talented, and we still have a ton of talent on the offense. So it's like next man up. I don't want to, you know, it's kind of year six. Kind of that, that I don't feel like that excuse flies, you know, because last mm-hmm. year the excuse was COVID. This year it's injuries. I mean, it's just like eventually you got to step up and and make it happen, you know. Yeah, and who knows? Maybe it will happen. I mean, could you imagine if it did? How like that would be amazing if, if somehow, some way, Seth says, "All right, you know, at the end of the day, we're gonna win some games," and he does it. Could you imagine that? That would be awesome. And, and you know, maybe it will happen. Maybe it won't. But anyway, JD, anything else we need to touch on? I mean, I, I know it's just kind of a quick one, just quick recap. But anything else that we failed to to mention that you feel like we need to throw in there? No, I think that I think the bye week comes at a good time. I think we're going to have to. We can hopefully coaching staff, players, step back, regroup, figure out what's going on, and and maybe you know. Head to Missouri. I mean, like I said, that's going to be at an SEC opponent. I don't expect us to win it, but maybe we, you know, show a little life and then get ready to come back to, um, you know, two straight home games and hopefully get our first conference victory. Absolutely. And, yeah, and, you know, we're not going to lose this week. That's a plus. So, (laughs) anyway, guys, so really, if you guys have any – conference or the rest of our schedule predictions for our eight remaining games put them in the comments down below what do you think we're going to go you think we're going to go oh and eight think we're going to go get four and four with the remaining eight really want to hear what you guys have to say and your thoughts and once again jd thanks for jumping on and we'll talk again soon and as always go mean green go mean green <laughs>